Given are the graphs of y1 equals 2x plus 5 and y2 equals negative x minus 1. In part a, how many times do these curves intersect and what are their points of intersection? Looking at the graph, we can see there is one point of intersection and it is here at the point negative 2 comma 1. These lines intersect once at negative 2 comma 1. In part b, we will use the graph to solve the equation 2x plus 5 equals negative x minus 1. When we recognize that the left side of the equation 2x plus 5 is exactly the same thing as the line y1, and the right side of the equation negative x minus 1 is exactly the same thing as the line y2, we need to recognize what we are looking for is the point of intersection, but specifically the equation that we are solving only has an x value in it. There are no y's in the equation. The y values in the graph are subtly hidden in the y1 and the y2 that's behind the scenes in the equation. The point of this being that the solution to the equation will be exactly the x-coordinate from the point of intersection. So to use the graph to solve the equation 2x plus 5 equals negative x minus 1, we simply identify this happens when x equals negative 2 and we can write that as a solution set, the set negative two. What we solved was an equation, but in this video, we're going to take it a step further and solve linear inequalities using this graph. So instead of solving the equation two x plus five equals negative x minus one, we'll in part C solve the inequality two x plus five is greater than negative x minus one, or in part D, two x plus five is less than or equal to negative x minus one. To do that, we're going to begin by first looking at the interactive version of this graph. When we go to this Desmos website listed here, it'll load up an interactive version of this graph. Before we actually look at the interactive graph though, I want to look at part C and see what it is we're going to be looking for. In part C, the first thing we need to do is highlight the portions of y1 equal to 2x plus 5, where 2x plus 5 is greater than negative x minus 1. Again, it is important to recognize anywhere we have 2x plus 5, we're really talking about the y1 value. And anywhere we have negative x minus 1, we're really talking about the y values on the y2 graph. Again, remembering that the y1 equal to 2x plus 5 is the red line, and the y2 is the negative x minus 1 is the blue line, we're really looking for where the y1 graph is greater than the y2 graph. But specifically, we're talking about the y values where are the y values on the red graph greater than the y values on the blue graph? This is where the interactive graph can assist us. So let's load that up. And when it loads, you'll notice there are two points moving, a blue point along the blue line, or the y2 line, and a point on the red line, the y1 equal to 2x plus 5 line. What we're looking for to answer this question is where the red point becomes greater than the blue point. So what we're going to do is use this slider over here on the left side of the graph that controls the x values of the points that we're looking at, and we're going to slowly slide over starting to a point of negative 6. For this x value of negative 6, the y value on the blue line is above the y value on the red line, meaning that the y2 value, or the value obtained from negative x minus 1, is greater than the y value obtained from the 2x plus 5. So at this point, the y2 is greater than the y1, or negative x minus 1 is greater than 2x plus 5. As we move further to the right, say to x equal to negative 3, the blue point and the red point are closer, but yet the blue is still greater than, it is still higher than the red point. When we go a little bit further to an x value of negative 2, we obtain that point of intersection at negative 2, 1. This is the point where the two graphs were equal and we have the solution to 2x plus 5 equals negative x minus 1. If we continue moving further to the right, say to x equal to negative 1, we are now in a situation where the red point is above the blue point, meaning the y value there is greater than the y value on the blue line. In other words, at this point, 2x plus 5 is greater than negative x minus 1. And if we continue moving further and further to the right, this will continue to be the case. 
the red values will continue to rise and the blue values will continue to fall. And so forever on out from this point on, the y values on 2x plus 5 will be greater than the y values on negative x minus 1. So now bringing this back to our lecture note packet, we were asked first to highlight the portions of the y1 graph, y1 equal to 2x plus 5, where 2x plus 5 is greater than negative x minus 1. Well, that happens on that second half of the graph. That happens everywhere here. For that entire portion, the red graph is vertically above the blue graph. So the y values there are greater than the y values on the blue graph. Or 2x plus 5, because that's that line, is greater than negative x minus 1. So we've now identified where y1 is greater than the y2. The key thing to recognize, to use this graph to solve 2x plus 5 is greater than negative x minus 1, again we're in a situation where we are solving for x, yet our graph involves both x's and y's. So the point at which we started to highlight this graph was at that intersection point at an x value of negative 2, and it continued to the right forever because the red graph continued to go up forever. So if we highlight the same thing on the x-axis, because again our answers are going to be x values, we would be highlighting everything from negative 2 on to infinity. So to state this solution in interval notation, the interval will start at negative 2 and go forever to infinity. When we use interval notation in infinity, the infinity will have a parenthesis to represent the fact that we cannot include it as a value in the work that we're doing here. But the question becomes, do we include negative 2 as a solution or not? If I were to put negative 2 in for the x's back in the original inequality, would I get that 2x plus 5 is greater than negative x minus 1? Or would I get that they're equal? Well, we know from our answer in part b, they would be equal. And because I want strictly greater than, I cannot include the negative 2 in my answer. So the interval becomes from negative 2 to infinity, leaving out the negative 2, meaning the negative 2 is not included, and it has to have a parenthesis. To write the same answer in set builder notation, this would become the set of all x's, again recognizing the solutions are only x values, such that, and in this case, the x values have to be greater than negative 2. If you look at what we have drawn on the x-axis, treating the x-axis as a number line just in and of itself, you'll notice it started at negative 2 and continued on over to the right forever on to infinity. So that is exactly x is greater than negative 2, or the interval from negative 2 to infinity. In part d, we want to now do a very similar process, but consider the inequality 2x plus 5 is less than or equal to negative x minus 1. So again, we're going to begin part d the same way we began part c, by highlighting the portions of the y1 equal to 2x plus 5, where in this case, 2x plus 5 is less than or equal to negative x minus 1. If it helps, go back to the interactive graph and manually control the slider to get an idea where are the red points below the blue points. So far for what we're doing, from negative 10 where we started up to this point at say negative 3, the red point has been below the blue point. And so this is what we're looking for, for the 2x plus 5 to be below the negative x minus 1. And again, this will continue to stay below that until we reach that point of intersection again at negative 2, 1. So at negative 2, 1, these two are equal. But anywhere to the left of that, the red line is below the blue line. The 2x plus 5 is below the negative x minus 1. So now let's return back to the notes to highlight this portion of the y1 equal to 2x plus 5, where the red line is below the blue line. This happens exactly on the opposite side from our previous answer, and becomes everything from negative 2 to the left. In terms of the x-axis, this is happening from negative 2 on to the left. So to solve the inequality, 2x plus 5 is less than or equal to negative x minus 1, we must stop and remind ourselves we are solving for x values. So the y values here helped us figure out where this would happen, but the answer must be in terms of x, because our inequality that we're solving does not have any y's in it. So on this one, if we preferred, we could begin with the set builder notation. and we can begin constructing it in reverse. The inequality that will be equivalent to the one we have up above will involve both x and negative 2, 
we definitely need to the left of negative 2, so we need our x values to be less than. But then the question becomes, can it be equal to? Well, since the inequality we were originally solving included both less than or equal to, we do need to include the point where they intersect. And since we can include the point where they intersect or the point where the red is below the blue, we need this answer to include less than or equal to. Now we can construct the rest of the set builder notation around it. The set builder notation will be the set of all x's such that that inequality is true. So the set builder notation becomes the set of all x's such that x is less than or equal to negative 2. So to construct the interval notation, we might begin by constructing the fact that we want to go from negative 2 forever to the left. And we know that we can include that point at negative 2, so it will get a bracket. The catch here is when we write the interval notation, the interval notation must be written left to right. So we don't want to write it from negative 2 forever to the left. We need to say, I'm going to start as far as I can go to the left, which means negative infinity, and I'm going to go from negative infinity up to that point at negative 2. So the interval is negative infinity to negative 2. Because I cannot include negative infinity in the calculation, it must get the parenthesis. And because we could include negative 2 to still make this true, so negative 2 is a solution, we need the square bracket on the negative 2. So we can use these graphs to both solve equations and inequalities.